Hello and uh, welcome to the latest episode of the Good Drum Show with me, Chris Goodrum. Right, okay, so you've seen the title page, you're probably thinking, what is he going on about this week? Well, I will reveal all in due course, uh, but first a quick plug for uh, the latest issue of the Whiskey Magazine, uh, issue number 137, really, some really interesting articles in that, certainly some interesting stuff about uh, um, uh, bourbons and American whiskey. Um, obviously, usual tasting notes uh, can be found there. Big congratulations to uh, the Ben Romack 35 year old for being editor's choice, and that was pretty damn good. And if you can get hold of a bottle now, <laughs> you'll probably be, um, well, it's probably uh, it'd be impressive if you can. Apparently, it's, uh, it was a fairly small production anyway, but uh, anyway, that was a damn good whiskey. Um, so, anyway. Let's, let's talk about today's episode of the show. Um, we're looking at a distillery called uh, the Crucifix Distillery, or Distilleria Crucifix, or something of that, that kind of ilk. Um, the distillery itself is a family-owned distillery. It was uh, uh, built in uh, 2009 in... Now, before we go any further, there are some foreign words involved, which I'm probably going to horribly mangle, so... <laughs> You'll just have to excuse the rather poor pronunciation. So, uh, the distillery is in the um, village town of Kreese in Slovenia. Now, I've got no idea how I came across this this particular distillery. Uh, just I don't, I don't remember. I remember having a, an email conversation with uh, Matia, uh, and a big thank you to her for the samples for uh, today's episode of the show. It just sounded interesting, and. Um, the, um, the the distillery itself is, uh, like I said, situated in Kreis, uh which is um, near the uh, Slovenia-Austrian border in the um, apparently the sunny side of the Julian Alps, um, and the distillery itself produces a huge array of flavoured uh, eau de vies. Well, they're not really flavoured eau de vies, eau de vies and um, liqueurs. Now. If you thought that Parr at uh, Schmogen was, should we say, somewhat anal about uh, how he goes about making his spirits, he's got nothing on these guys. Um, like I said, they make about, must be about 30 odd different um, eau de vies using things like um, larch, mountain pine, um, various um, other herbs and um, uh, fruits as well. Now, no bog standard base spirit for this one. Each individual uh, eau de vie stroke liqueur is made from what it is flavoured with. So, for example, if you take um, the plum that we're going to be tasting uh, uh, this afternoon, the base spirit is fermented plums and then distilled from that. I mean, you know, what? I mean, that's incredible. The liqueurs are all flavoured by um natural that the natural honey from whatever that is that they're, they're base distilling so i mean just just think about this for a minute you know so you've got 30 or 40 or different products that you make each one has got a different base spirit different flavoring i mean you know and, and i can't imagine the distillery is particularly big so i mean if you're doing say you know one you know one mashing of a particular um product a week you know 52 weeks in a year i mean it's going to take you at least to get around to doing the whole range of stuff i mean you know it's just just mind-blowing when you think about it i mean they also do uh, a vodka i believe they do they do a whiskey which we'll be tasting at the end and i'm really looking forward to trying that um and you know so and they also do tequila now i can't imagine that Agave grows in the foothills of the Alps, but I could well be wrong. It's not a question I actually asked, to be bluntly honest with you. Um, so, why am I tasting these? Well, I th the, the company are looking to get into the UK market. I mean, everybody wants to be in the UK market. It is the market to be in, obviously. It's very, very competitive. I mean, I don't really profess to know an awful lot about the sort of eau de vie kind of... Um, liqueur kind of market to be honest with you because I'm not a big fan of liqueurs and you know, we don't sell an awful lot of eau de vies and things like that um, so hopefully they'll, they'll get a deal and um, 
you know, be, be, be available in the UK at some stage. I mean, maybe, you know, they are available in your local market wherever you're watching from. So, you know, this, this might be interesting. Um, so, why is the, the story named Crucifix? Well, um, maybe they are partially religious. I don't know. It does seem to be... Central Europe does seem to be a, a cradle of, uh, of, of religion and Christianity and all that kind of stuff, I guess, to a certain extent. But apparently, um, the, in the, 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 uh, the, the village of Crease, there is a church called uh, St. Cross. Above the church, there is the Cross Path. Um, over the Cross Path, there is uh, a place called Kriska Gorga, Gora, the Cross Mountains. So kind of everything is saying cross, crucifix, you know. So that's pretty much according to according to uh, the advertising blurb um, how the distillery got its name. So, um, but anyway, it, I think this is going to be quite an interesting uh, little tasting, and um, I think it's probably that time I introduce the ranger. Like I said. Um, they do a huge, huge range. I mean, practically, they do an eau de vie and a liqueur version of the same thing. And so, uh, you know, choosing half a dozen out of, you know, 30-odd different spirits was actually quite tricky. So it was kind of like, well, that one, that one, that one, that sounds interesting. So um, what we have here is four eau de vies, one liqueur, and one whiskey. I mean, I obviously had to taste the whiskey. I mean, that was that was definitely a given. So we're going to kick off with the one liqueur. It's bottled at uh, twenty percent, which is about par for the course with regards to liqueurs. Uh, it is called Makasen, uh, which is um, Slovenian for larch. So it's obviously distilled from a base from uh, ferment of larch and flavoured with larch and. Um, uh, natural honey from the larch or the sweetening from that I believe so that should be quite interesting then we're going to look at the first of the four eau de vies this is Smreka um, which is uh, spruce uh, all the eau de vies and the whiskey are bottled at 40% um, the second one we will be looking at is Rusieve God, I'd probably have murdered that one, I imagine. I mean, you know, it's, it's all E's, V's and J's, you know. Um, and uh, um, that is made from mountain pine, so should be interesting. The third one is, uh, I thought we will ought to have a look at a fruit one, so I opted for plum, as I quite like plum. Um, so this is Sliver. I could pronounce that one. That one's easy. Um, and again, like I said, bottled at 40%. Um, Bizarrely enough, they do, um, like I said, not only do tequila, they do, um, I think, a vodka, uh, a whiskey, they also do uh, an absinthe. Uh, but we're not looking at the absinthe, we're just looking at this, the, the wormwood eau de vie, which um, could be interesting. I often find sort of absinthe can be a little bit kind of soapy in character, certainly when you add a little bit of water to it. Anyway, um, so this is called, in Slo uh, Slovenian, is called Pelin, and uh, like I said, bottled at 40%. Now, um, coming finally to the whiskey, this this chap, I love the label. <laughs> the label's actually quite quite cool. Um, now, not that I knew when I wanted to taste it, but obviously subsequently found out the um, now the whiskey is made from. Before we go any further, most or predominantly most of the ingredients are sourced locally in either their garden in inverted commas, which is what they call it, which is probably a huge area around the, around the distillery, or they sort of come from the, the actual uh, region of, of, of uh, Gorenska in um, uh, Slovenia. And so the, the barley comes from a, a local farmer. Uh, the whiskey is then obviously, I believe, double distilled, um, and it's aged from one year and seven months to two years and three months. So making small batches, and the interesting thing about this is it's aged in uh, casts that are made from alpine oak. A bit different. I mean, most of uh, as, you know most distilleries, even those in Europe and uh, uh, Scandinavia and places like that, have a tendency to use American oak or, or European sherry butts. Uh, some will will use local um, oak, certainly 
uh, in Japan you've got Mizunara and you've got certainly in, in Sweden they use some uh, uh, local Swedish oak as well so it's quite nice that everything is, is you know, pretty much you know whole if it doesn't shake the concept of of, of toar and place and all that kind of stuff then you know what does I mean this is uh, you know um, going to be quite interesting I think so anyway I think that's enough waffle. You probably want to know what this lot tastes like, don't you? So, let's kick off with the um, with the liqueur then. Right. Okay. So uh, let's see what the nose gives us, then, shall we? Actually, it's not too sweet, which is the biggest issue I have with liqueurs. They often tend to be horribly sweet and a little bit sickly, but this is actually really nicely balanced. Um, it, it's got an obvious larch character, well I'm guessing it's the, the larch that's coming through, I, I must admit I don't haven't smelt a larch tree for um, well, probably ever, <laughs> um, but it has a very distinctive kind of herbal uh, kind of character, almost not medicinal in the sort of medicinal peat kind of character, but medicinal in a sort of a medicinal tonic-y kind of character which is quite interesting. It's really natural. It's got a sort of a bit of a green sort of woody note to it as well. And I just think this is really nicely balanced. You, you're certainly getting the spirit coming through. It's not too sweet. There's a little bit of little bit of kind of you know natural honey, um, just giving it that 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 sort of balancing sweetness. And just like I say, it's really really herbal. Sort of almost kind of almost heathery kind of notes, that sort of floral herbal kind of uh, axis should we say. Again for a, a liqueur, really nicely balanced, not too sweet, doesn't finish with that sort of mouth cloying sweetness, it's all really well balanced, which is quite a surprise um, considering it's only 20% uh, ABV. Again, it's pretty much like the nose, it's got a little bit of honeyed notes, it's got that sort of heathery, herbally kind of medicinal tonic kind of character. And I don't think that's too bad at all in actual fact. I mean, it's it's like I said, I'm not the world's biggest fan or the most knowledgeable person about liqueurs because they're just they're not really my kind of thing. But I think um, purely tasting that from a, a sort of a, you know quality uh, perspective, then you know absolutely no arguments from me about that. Right. Okay. Let's move on to the first of the eau de vies. This is the uh, the spruce. Um, so let's see what the nose gives us. Very sprucey. <laughs> it's just reeks of it. It has that sort of kind of not pine needles, but spruce needles. You know that kind of sort of Christmas tree needles uh, kind of smell. A little bit of earth. A little bit of just a little bit of sweetness in the background, not obviously to the level of the um, to the liqueur, but it does have a little bit of sweetness right in the background. I, it's wonderfully rounded. There's no 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 rough edges. I mean, you know, some shall we say eau de vies, even from France and you know places that that you know generally can make great eau de vies can be you know somewhat rough and ready, shall we say? But uh, this is really polished, really nice, um, plenty of character. Pal. Soft, a little bit of oily spirit character, um, lots of spruce, that kind of sort of spruce needles, green green wood, um, 
a little bit of a bite in the finish from the alcohol just kind of like adds a little bit of something else to it so it's not all kind of hmm really lingering i mean the thing is i mean these sort of spirits are so you know the sort of thing you're either going to be really into these kind of herbal eau de vies and things or you're not at the end of the day um and um again it's not sort of something that uh, uh, I would uh, rave about, but I think the quality of that is, is pretty good. You know, it's got some a bit of spirit character, which is what what you're looking for. Um, a bit of oiliness. Uh, it has, you know, obviously plenty of the character of what it's supposed to have, the flavouring element. Um, good length, not harsh, rounded, smooth, soft. You know, well, it's you know pretty good. I think so. Um, so yeah, not bad. Right, okay, so let's move on to the mountain pine then. Uh, you would expect that pine and spruce would probably be fairly similar to each other, so uh, so let's see. Not as fresh as the um, as the, 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 the spruce, it's certainly got a more deeper, oilier, woodier kind of character. It's got almost whiskey like kind of character because I mean I'll, you know you often pick up pine notes in certain whiskies and um I think if you were sort of if you were nosing this blind I think you'd be you'd certainly be thinking that this was some sort of whiskey possibly although there's obviously no oak element um or barley or malt <laughs> but it, it you're kind of getting where I'm coming from here, I, I hope. Um, it's subtler than the um, uh, than the the, 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 the previous the, the spruce, um, and I like this. I, this I think you know this is so so far. I think this is this is my favourite. Um, admittedly, we've only done three and only done two of the ODVs, but certainly this is uh, this is the one that I kind of you know warm to the most, shall we say? Well, Very long, nice kind of almost chewy kind of finish. Again, the pine notes are very subtle. It's all really well integrated. There's a little bit of green wood, a touch of herbs, or a sort of slight herbaceous kind of character. Um, hmm. You know, actually, that is really quite pleasant. Um, I mean, I don't know how easy it is to make. Um, you know, effectively, you know, ferment. Um, you know. Uh, pine and larch. I mean, I can't imagine they're the easiest of, of things to, um, uh, to 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 ferment from. I mean, I don't know how they do it either. But I, I imagine they must make it into some kind of sawdust or something like that. You know, uh, almost kind of like milling barley up. Um, but you know, the whole process must just be pretty impressive. It has to be said, and um, whoever kind of came up with it was was either genius or completely barking mad, as far as I'm concerned. So, um, or maybe possibly a bit of both. So uh, anyway, so yeah, so yeah, I like that. that. That's 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 good. That's 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 enjoyable. Right. Let's move on to the plum now. This is punch. I mean, I can smell plum from here. I mean, I haven't even got to put my nose in the glass, and I can smell really sweet, overripe plum. And um, oh no, that's oh that's sweet. That's oh perfumed. It's ooh, touch of marzipan sort of coming through. Although it's obviously no oak, but it's I'm getting marzipan, um, but. All I'm just getting is just huge perfumed sweet plums and it's just, no, no, it's kind of too, it's not artificial, it's kind of just too, too perfumed for its own good and it's, it's almost a bit, dare I say it, a bit sickly to be honest with you. Palette.
Oh, that's a bit odd. It's kind of perfumed sweet plums, really a little bitterness on the finish. I don't know where that's coming from, possibly possibly from the um, uh, stalks maybe, possibly from the um, kernel, uh, or even possibly from the, uh, the skins. I mean, that's Oh, it's just too ooh, too sweet. I really, really don't like that at all. Um, I mean, yes, it tastes of plums, but those plums are just just far, far too perfumed, far too sweet, and a little bit, a little bit on the sickly side. I mean, the balance is okay. I mean, certainly the the, the alcohol kind of like stops it becoming, you know, hugely horribly sweet. But you know, it's still, yeah, not really my uh, my thing. It has to be said. Right, okay, so let's move on to the wormwood. Let's see what that gives us then, shall we? Classic green character. If you probably just about pick that up, I, I hope. Um, so let's see what those gives us. Wormwood, as one would expect. Um, certainly doesn't have the kind of um, soapiness that you kind of, that I, I've often found in um, absinthe. It's certainly got a freshness a crispness uh, to it wormwood's got a little bit of a bitter edge to it possibly but um, nothing unpleasantly so I think I think if you're into your your absinthe and stuff like that I think uh, you'd certainly uh, this would certainly appeal to you a little bit of almost kind of burnt wood possibly coming through yeah interesting Huh? Yeah, pleasant, crisp, a little bit of spice, kind of in the sort of bitter cinnamony sort of spice you know not not kind of sweet a lot of wood character um, almost barky on the finish um, as you know wormwood is supposedly uh, uh, has hallucinogenic uh, pro properties so if I start talking a load of complete waffle uh, <laughs> and complete rubbish after this and you know the reason why then won't you um and don't say that I do that all the time um yeah, it tastes of wormwood. It's 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 an interesting spirit. Like I said, I don't. It doesn't kind of have that sort of slight sort of um, soapy kind of character that you get with with absinthe. Um, it's certainly got a fresher, crisper kind of character, and it's just yeah, yeah. It's it's interesting. I think is the the word I would tend to use. Right, finally. We're on to the whiskey. Finally, we get to some real, real, real spirit. No, honestly, um, we get to the whiskey. So let's see what the nose gives us, then, shall we? There's a lot of oak there, um, and you can understand why they don't age it for too long. Um, my God, that's picked up the oak. A lot of vanilla. It's kind of tight vanilla, almost, Almost like French oak, it has that sort of tightness to it, but doesn't quite kind of have the sort of the spiciness of, uh, of French oak um, or the grittiness. It's um, really soft, almost kind of a piney kind of note coming through. Um, really soft. I think. I think if you like American whiskies, this is certainly in your kind of uh, area. Um, it's got some nice multi notes. A little bit of sweet spice. I must admit, I kind of, like I said, I mean, you know, I was half expecting this to be a little bit rough and ready, shall we say, but this is really polished. This is actually, yeah, really, really enjoyable. I, 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 I like this. Um, it's well made. It's not hugely complex. Um, you wouldn't expect it to be uh, for a, a spirit of that kind of age. Um, I mean, I wonder whether whether they should age this for a little bit longer. You know, do a single barrel release, possibly. That could be interesting, just to see 
how long it would actually survive in alpine oak. I mean, what, I mean, it seems to me from the colour, I mean, you know, I would have thought it's been aged in, in, in probably in brand new casks, I would have thought. So maybe they could do a bottling, you know, um, aged in, in, in refilled casks to maybe take away some of the overt character of the oak. Um, but it's got some nice sweetness. There's a little bit of almost kind of orange conserve. But it's really kind of dusty and a bit piney, sawdusty, but not in that sawdusty mature kind of way. Um, yeah, it's just um, interesting. Really interesting. Palette. Yeah, malty, woody, piney, slightly herbal, almost kind of heathery herbal kind of character. Um, it's got a good length. Um, again, it's not hugely complex. And yes, you could argue that the oak is possibly one of the most dominant characters in the whiskey, but I still think that's a really enjoyable whiskey. If you like your American whiskies, then you're going to like all that kind of oak character, you know, the big vanillins, and this has certainly got plenty of big vanillins, but the vanillins are kind of quite tight um, and a little bit sort of, not spicy, but woody. You know, again, like I said, it's got that kind of piney kind of note to it, and um, yeah, you know, I I would stock that. I would I would urge I would urge one's customers. Uh, to try it because I like it a bit weird and wonderful as you well know but not so weird and wonderful that it's undrinkable and that certainly is not undrinkable that is actually really pleasant and um, yeah that was a good finish right okay so let's sum this week's episode of the show up um, so the crucifix distillery in Slovenia well like I said, a really big, big thank you to the distillery uh, for sending me the samples and a really big thank you to Matia um, for answering all my questions and sending me pictures and all that kind of stuff. And uh, um, I hope I hope I've done a good job of uh, tasting your, your, your spirits. Um, I think if the all of the liqueurs are as well balanced as the, the larch, then, well, yeah, they're, they're, they're good. Um, not too sweet, nice kind of balance to them. I think with the Eau de Vies, it seems to me that, and again, having only a very small snapshot of their range, that the uh, non-fruit ones seem to work the best, or certainly in this, this case, um, they seem to sort of you know, show better. Um, certainly the plum one is just, no, just horribly, horribly sweet, and just really, to me, not... I would want to drink whatsoever. Um, I think, I think uh, of of the uh, the three, the sort of like uh, the, the mountain pine was certainly my favourite of the three. Certainly had you know a subtlety and a depth. Um, but you know people like to sort of like you know when they have a flavoured eau de vie. Well, it's not, again, it's not really a flavoured eau de vie because the, the damn stuff is made with it all. You know so. Um, you know they they certainly want to taste that, and so you know things like the uh, uh, the spruce and the worm would certainly deliver that. You know, there's no there's no shortage of character of either of those particular things. Um, and the whiskey, well, you know, I think probably out of all of the spirits, I think I'm most impressed with the whiskey. I mean, you know, I love something that's a little bit different. You know that um, the fact that it, you know it's it's local barley. It's um, aged in, uh, you know, alpine oak. It's just like, uh, you know, just, just really, really interesting. Like I said, I'd like to see it with a little bit more age. I'd like to see it aged in possibly refill cast so it isn't too aggressive on the oak. Um, but, you know, the, the product that uh, the distillery have out is certainly not bad whatsoever. So, um, 
I'd say, you never know, you know. I mean, I've certainly got Swiss, uh, well, I can't even speak now. Um, that's the wormwood for you kicking in. Um, Swiss whiskey on the shelves. Uh, you know, we've got Swedish whiskey, English, Welsh, you know, Irish. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, uh, some European whiskies are still in their nappies and probably, uh, you know, not, uh, not what I'd want to sort of put in. Uh, in the list but certainly you know I, I would quite happily put this on our list I'd quite happily sell that um, so I don't think you can get um, a, a bigger praise than that not I should say that I'm you know the be all and end all when it comes to, to tasting whiskey but certainly I think um, I think it would have my seal of approval uh, if it was uh, launched in the UK um, anyway so I think that's a kind of a, enough hallucinogenic rambling <laughs> hopefully this was a bit of a weird and wonderful crazy enough kind of episode um so god only knows what we're going to be doing next week but anyway until then um good dramming and uh, good afternoon <laughs>